Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, today I will try to give you quite brief impacts uh, of the earthquake. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, we had first the uh, preliminary reports and now we have final reports about the impacts uh, of these earthquakes, uh, but still we'll need time uh, especially for the uh, losses uh, by the means of economic ways and for the uh, as impacts for the indirect losses. So here, um, uh, I, I didn't uh, uh, prepare this pre presentation myself. Uh, Çağlar Göksu, Kerem Yıldız Aslanlı and uh, Ahmet Atıl Aşıcı uh, helped me to uh, provide this presentation for you. And I think Ahmed is here. Uh, Chalar is again on the uh, earthquake zone uh, for uh, some research. And Kerem uh, is in the uh, graduate jury at the moment. So that's why they couldn't attend to this presentation. So uh, first, I, I want to introduce you our Paratus team in Turkey, in uh, Istanbul. So we have uh, here uh, two different um, representations. The first one, the representatives from local government, Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, and the uh, director uh, of the Earthquake Risk Management and Urban Improvement uh, Department, Özlem Tut, and also uh, Dr. Uh, Ece Özlem Pak and Dr. Betül Ergün Konukçu, they are involved to the uh, project. And when we look at our team in ITU, um, we have uh, Çağlar Göksu, Associate Professor in Civil Engineering, Kerem Yunus Aslan, the uh, Associate Professor in Urban and Regional Planning, and Ahmet Atıl Aşıcı, uh, Associate Professor in Economy. So when our uh, Paratus journey started, first we met uh, in Eskede in October 2022. Uh, to meet each other, to discuss uh, the future and the coming steps of Paratus. And as you see, we were pretty much happy in this picture. And when we turn back uh, to Istanbul, so I can show you this little presentation, uh, we uh, had to work on the first kickoff meeting with our stakeholder, the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. And uh, our first meeting was held in a facility of Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. First, we started with introduction. We had uh, online connections uh, with the other members of Paratus. And uh, in each table, we tried to uh, know each other first. And then our discussion starts about, firstly, uh, the major threats that Istanbul is facing to. And then here you see the group picture uh, in the meeting. And um, we discussed about the um, major problems or obstacles in managing uh, such disasters. Uh, the major disasters that uh, participants declare was uh, earthquake, and climate change and floods. And then in the very last part, we discuss uh, how to overcome these obstacles and problems. Uh, here you see some pictures dur uh, taken during the uh, workshop program. And then uh, after working a couple of hours, uh, we produce uh, such notes. Uh, and then uh, after sharing those notes, the spokesperson uh, from each table uh, they uh, presented what they had discussed during this workshop and um, which topics uh, were in uh, in the uh, need to be um, considered as major important points, uh, especially in overcoming uh, these problems and uh, the situations. And then after this meeting, uh, we started to work on the Istanbul external stakeholder meeting, uh, which uh, would be uh, on the 23rd of February in 2023. Unfortunately, uh, at the morning of uh, 6th of February, uh, we woke up such a day um, 
we heard that uh, a major earthquake occurred in the eastern part of Turkey, and we tried to understand uh, what was going on at that moment. But first, I want to talk about a little bit on the uh, seismic future in the, of this region to better give you information uh, about the occurrence of the earthquake. Here you see uh, the tectonic plates of the world, and we see that in the junction of those uh, plates, there are major fault systems. And when we focus to, uh, to our region, uh, we can easily see that there is Arabian plate uh, which uh, which moves to the north uh, to the north, and <clears throat> there is Euro-Asian plate on the north. And here, because of this two-way pressures, um, the Anatolian plate is squeezed between two uh, these two major forces. So you can uh, imagine that squeezing a soap in your hands. That's why Anatolian plate each year moves through uh, western western side, and uh, this movement creates two big fault system uh, in Anatolia. The first one, the North Anatolian fault, and the second one is East Anatolian fault. And there is also Dead Sea fault system, uh, which is parallel in that area. And the earthquake, the first earthquake uh, of the 6th of February, occurred exactly in that point. Here uh, you see the location of the earthquake centers uh, in the map of uh, Turkey. Uh, here you see uh, the shocks, the, the main shocks and aftershocks until 15 of uh, March. Uh, and as far as I heard from the region, still those aftershocks are continuing. So what happened? Uh, it was 4.17 a.m. Uh, of the 6th of February. Uh, an earthquake with the magnitude 7.7 .7, uh, hit that region. So this is the uh, location of the first earthquake and it lasted about 65 seconds and I can tell you that this is a quite long earthquake and um, after, uh, after this earthquake another one uh, which we can uh, call it as aftershock with the magnitude 6.8 occurs after uh, 11 minutes later of the first shock so here we can also may consider 6.8 uh, 6 magnitude earthquake is a big earthquake at the same time. And another, um, another big earthquake uh, occur uh, about nine hours later in that point with the magnitude of 7.6 and it lasted about 45 seconds. First, it was considered as an aftershock of the first earthquake but after a while, after having uh, records from seismic stations around, uh, it was um, announced that this earthquake occurred in a, another fault zone. So there are independent earthquake, uh, but uh, this the first one uh, triggered the second one. And afterwards, uh, on the 20th of February, Two aftershocks this time occur in this region. You can see with the orange dot with the magnitude uh, 6.4 and 5.8. Uh, the first one occur at um, uh, 4, point, uh, 4 past 8 and the other one 7 past 8 p.m. So they were quite close to each other. And by March 15, more than 15,000 aftershocks occur in the affected area, and 44 of them are between 5 to 5.9 in magnitude, and three of them are between 6 to 6.9. And when we look at the uh, intensity map of the earthquake, uh, we can see uh, the the locations of the first one and the second one and uh, we can see that on those areas um, the the earthquake felt extremely and consequently there are too many uh, unfortunately losses uh, destruction in that area uh, and also this earthquake these earthquakes were felt 
in, uh, in large territory. Additionally, in Idlib and Aleppo, uh, there were some disruptions due to those earthquakes and, of course, uh, due to the earthquake occurred in Hatay in the 20th of February. So, uh, in the uh, territory of Turkey, uh, about uh, the earthquake affected a region where a population of 13.5 million people live. And in the Syrian part, the population in that region is about uh, 8.5 million. Uh, of course, to understand the impact uh, of the earthquake, we are going to look at some pictures, but first uh, we can talk with numbers. Here in the middle, you see a table of PGA, peak ground acceleration, uh, in the affected regions uh, uh, in, in Turkey. First, uh, what we see, uh, here uh, we can see the horizontal uh, peak ground accelerations and vertical peak ground accelerations. When we look at the recourse in, uh, at Hatay, uh, we see, considering the gravity is one, here the uh, PGA reached to 1.39. So this is something huge. And also uh, when we consider the vertical um, peak ground acceleration, it's also above one. And again, uh, in the other regions, uh, it was felt uh, above uh, more than one PGA, and uh, you see the rest. And here I found out um, a table uh, from USGS, uh, they uh, they try to um, give information how uh, these accelerations are felt or perceived uh, by people or by exposed objects. Here we can see that uh, between 0.7 and 1.39, uh, the perceived shaking is violent and potential damage is heavy. Um, here we see um, the records uh, of the earthquake comparing to previous biggest earthquakes occurring in Turkey. Uh, here in the first one, I mean in the slide, you see the horizontal acceleration. Um, we used to talk uh, about 1999 earthquakes. Uh, which were devastating as well and occurred in Kojeda region and is, some parts of Istanbul were affected uh, because of this earthquake. And here we can see that horizontal acceleration was 0.4. Once we come to the, um, the first earthquake uh, on February 6, we see that it reached to 1.38 and the aftershock reached to 0.45, again bigger than the Kojeli earthquake. And the second one with the magnitude uh, 7.6 reached to 0.64. And the one uh, in uh, the one occurred in Hatay on the 20th of February reached 0.45. So these four earthquakes, uh, they're bigger than we experienced in the last 20 or 30 years in Turkey. When we look at the vertical acceleration, again, uh, we see that those numbers are greater than the uh, numbers reached, to, uh, reached in, the, uh, in the major earthquakes uh, occur in the last 25 years. So let's have a look some pictures uh, from the field. Uh, here, uh, I used the pictures and the reports uh, from the Istanbul Technical University uh, final report about the earthquake in 2023 uh, because the, um, the groups, the research groups uh, of Istanbul Technical University, uh, they worked for the, um, for the ministry and for the um, insurance company at the same time and uh, so they collected all too too many too much data on the field work uh, using some pictures and some drones and using some uh, satellite pictures. So here uh, we see ruptures and surface displacement in the affected area. 
Uh, here uh, we may follow those ruptures uh, in this picture and we can see the horizontal um, displacement uh, with the with the length of 4.6 meters. And here again we can see some displacement uh, in a in a field. And we have more pictures here. Uh, there is a river and uh, it was blocked because of the displacement. So the displacement ratio is 3.3 meters. And um, some new field works uh, from the new field works, it was declared that uh, the maximum displacement in this fault system was observed in the past as seven meters. But uh, due to these earthquakes, they observe some displacement uh, about 12 meters. So we can understand uh, the, the impact uh, of this seismic activity uh, on the land. And also here we see a displacement and some ruptures. Uh, here we can see the vertical uh, rupture and vertical displacement. It's about 1.5 uh, meters. And here the horizontal displacement is around 3 meters again. And there are some smaller ruptures uh, in different parts of the area. And we can also observe uh, those displacement in the urban area as well. So uh, now we are uh, going to look some satellite images of the uh, affected provinces. Uh, Hatay is the most affected area uh, from the first earthquake and it received damage in the aftershock which occurred uh, 11 minutes later uh, of the first earthquake. And then uh, the other earthquake with the magnitude 7.6. And finally, on the 20th of February, the, uh, the epicenter of the earthquake was quite close in the uh, Hatay, uh, Hatay center. So each time in each earthquake, the heavily damaged buildings receive more damage. And, uh, and consequently, uh, most of them, they were collapsed due to those aftershocks, uh, especially in the aftershock of the uh, 20th, of, uh, 20th of February. Here uh, with the uh, red color, we can see uh, the demolished buildings. And here, uh, the, this is the settlement uh, near to Mediterranean. So it, uh, we can see that there are some damage in the city. Um, this area, Gaziantep Nurda, uh, was relatively close to the epicenter of the first earthquake. And um, in the very first moment uh, of the earthquake, we heard that uh, it was only this area received great damage. Of course, we had no information about other uh, settlements, other provinces, especially we had no clue about Hatay. In fact, no one told that uh, Hatay received such a big damage. Here we see uh, Kahraman Maraş uh, city center, which is quite close to uh, epicenters of both uh, major earthquakes. Here we see another uh, district of uh, Gaza Antep. We see that the damage focus on the city center. And here we see uh, Adiaman Center. Uh, we can easily follow that the damage ratio is quite large in those in in this path. And uh, some uh, detailed image uh, of the affected provinces. Here uh, we can see um, the picture of uh, Gaziantep before the earthquake. And this is the after the earthquake. We can easily observe that, especially this area, those buildings, they were totally collapsed. And uh, of course, from this satellite image, it's not too easy to understand heavily damaged buildings if they were not totally collapsed. 
uh, but especially in this area, uh, many heavily damaged buildings, uh, they are still under the demolition processes. This one is from Osmania. Uh, these buildings uh, ha have approximately more than 10 stories. And after the earthquake, we can see that most of them, they're banded in, in one direction. Uh, this must be because of the horizontal forces, horizontal uh, ground acceleration, and also due to liquefaction process uh, during the uh, during the earthquake. Here we have some drone images in the affected provinces. Uh, here we see Kahraman Maraş, uh, the the area which is the nearest area. Uh, to the epicenter of the earthquake. Uh, here we can we can see that those buildings they totally collapse uh, after this uh, after those big tremors. Uh, this is the center of uh, Hatay, Antakya. Uh, we can see uh, the debris of buildings. Again, another picture from the center. Here you see some historical uh, buildings and you can easily notice that they're totally collapsed. And this is a quite new picture. Uh, I downloaded this picture a couple of days ago. And this is the um, city center uh, of Hatay. Uh, here we have a reference point. This is Antakya High School. And this is today. So um, here in this picture, it's uh, easier to notice the uh, totally collapsed buildings because the debris there, they were cleaned up. But still, uh, many of those buildings will be uh, will be demolished soon. So uh, here we can see the size, uh, the size of the of the disaster here. So. Uh, why this disaster happens? Of course, uh, we have building codes. Uh, before the 1999 earthquake, the earthquake code or building code was updated in 1998. And uh, in 1999, two uh, big earthquakes occur, uh, one in August 17, the other one November 12. Uh, in Kojele and uh, Duce, respectively. And then after those earthquakes, um, the building codes, uh, they, uh, it was revised. And additionally, uh, building ins uh, inspection law enacted in 2001. And uh, there were some pilot cities to, um, to implement this law. Uh, and Gaziantep and Hatay, they were one of those uh, pilot cities. And then the law was extended to the whole country in 2010. And additionally, uh, we had a revision in 2007 here, and we had another recent revision in 2018. So we need to, uh, we know that we have building codes, but to better understand why those building codes didn't work or didn't help uh, to prevent this uh, destruction, we need to look at some pictures to better understand the root causes, <clears throat> sorry, the root causes of uh, building damage. Uh, mostly uh, we see the uh, collapse of floors in the form of pancakes. So it was resulted because of weak column and strong beam connections. So basically, if we uh, consider, let's say, the span as the column, and this is the beam, this connection should be uh, properly. And also the beams shouldn't be too heavy or too strong considering the strength of the uh, of the column. So here in the pictures, we can easily see that 
uh, columns are not strong enough to carry uh, the beams and the other stories. And yes, again, we see some soft story, uh, soft story and weak story examples in the area. In fact, we uh, we saw such collapse in 1999 earthquakes and <clears throat> the other big earthquakes uh, after uh, after 1999. And uh, we see the impacts of soil liquefaction. Uh, those buildings tilted to one side. Uh, here we can uh, see the, uh, the base of the building. Uh, it was tilted in that way. And some, um, some deformations on roads due to a uh, liquefaction problem in the area. So uh, this picture was taken by by Chalar, and uh, of course here uh, she wrote uh, some professional um, professional notes. Uh, but when we first talk, when she she was term, she turned back from the field uh, after the first visit, she said that uh, of course I, I I wasn't able to reflect uh, the the feeling of the area, but I could say that in front of me, there was a mountain of debris. So <clears throat> this uh, this was a quite high rise building. Uh, it was collapsed in one direction uh, due to liquefaction. And what else? We can see the problems related with the um, beam and column co uh, connections. And uh, furthermore, we can easily see that uh, in the collapse of this building, it gives a damage to this hotel, the, to Ramada Hotel. There was an uh, elevator here, and uh, it, uh, it took the uh, half of the elevator uh, during its collapse. Um, of course, Chalar, um, uh, prepare the slides and uh, hopefully she gave me a quick civil engineering course uh, to to give you some information uh, here we can see some uh, failures uh, of the uh, of the details of buildings in the first two pictures we see there is no cement no concrete uh, bag of gravels and here in the other slides we can see poor reinforcement details so, in fact, in this picture, uh, this turn um, creates some weaknesses uh, in the in the structural system of the building. And here we see uh, the poor connections because um, in many uh, in many example uh, examples, uh, these elements, this um, iron elements, uh, they were fixed in that way, but it should be banded in some way to keep uh, the building, keep the columns steady uh, once they receive this external force uh, due to earthquake. And again, in this, in, in this picture, uh, we see some insufficient joint reinforcement detail here. Again, our beams are too heavy. Uh, and the columns are too weak, and there is uh, there is several uh, severe problems in the connection system of these two elements. Um, some damage uh, due to short column system, and also this was interesting uh, here because of the uh, horizontal um, acceleration. Uh, some buildings, they hit each other during the earthquake. And here we can easily observe that the beam of one building uh, hit to the column of the other building and break the column of the second building. Uh, we see uh, this type of damage in the prefabricated uh, structures, especially in the industrial zone. Uh, here in this picture, you see uh, there is an element to keep the beam inside. Um, in several uh, areas, in several structures, uh, we see that 
um, those elements they haven't haven't been fixed. So in the vertical pit ground acceleration, this part moves up, and it couldn't find the uh, its way uh, on the column. It moves. So here we see uh, the displacement of these materials and the failure uh, of the uh, of structures. So mostly we observe this type of destruction in the industrial uh, industrial zone uh, in in the affected region. And uh, when we look at the damage on transportation systems, here we have a short video. So this is the connection road uh, to uh, to Hatay. Uh, you can easily see uh, the ruptures. And the pictures on the uh, picture on the right hand side, we see the Hatay airport. Uh, if I'm not wrong, in two or three days, uh, this uh, this structure uh, was um, uh, this structure was um, okay. I don't remember the name. Uh, by the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, they fixed uh, this area. Some municipality and Ankara Metropolitan Municipality, if I'm not wrong. So, of course, we had some damage on uh, railways. Uh, in fact, we have we had seen uh, such um, such damage in the 1999 earthquakes. And uh, when we come to communication system, it was a um, it was a big problem because most of the um, base stations for especially for the uh, cell phones they were uh, installed on the top of buildings so here uh, when the buildings uh, they were received some damage or when they they were collapsed this system uh, was broken and uh, after the earthquake uh, Three uh, big companies, uh, cellular phone companies, Turkcell, Turk Telecom, and Vodafone, said that um, 8,900 8, base stations uh, are actively located in the region, but more than uh, 1,000 of them they were damaged after the earthquake disaster. And as a result, there was a uh, there was a problem in the region. Uh, regarding to communication and search, uh, search and rescue activities, because people uh, under debris they try to call uh, some help, they try to uh, tweet uh, in social media to to search for help. And um, just after the earthquake, uh, a fire uh, started at the. Iskenderun, uh, Iskenderun port. Uh, it started because of the um, overturned containers and they were filled of chemical substances and uh, this fire um, was ex extinguished in um, to 11 or 12th of, uh, of February. So approximately a week later. So when we look at the statistical uh, records, uh, first, here we see the construction days of dwellings uh, in the affected area. So here we can see that more than uh, more than half of those dwellings they were constructed after 2001. So uh, we could assume those dwellings they were performed well uh, in the uh, in the earthquake. But unfortunately, in many cases, especially uh, in the uh, high rise buildings, uh, we see we saw that um, they affected in a very bad way. Uh, when we look at the numbers, um, the collapse buildings, uh, damaged and collapsed buildings um, was more than six, uh, 60,000. And the number of damage and collapse dwellings was above um, 263,000. And when we uh, look at the um, um, look at the share, 
of, uh, of each provinces. Uh, here, when we look at the damage and collapse buildings, we, uh, we see that the majority of those collapse buildings were in Hatay, Kahramanmaraş, Gaziantep, Malatya, Adıyaman, and so on. And when we look at the, uh, uh, the same interpretation uh, regarding to dwellings, we see Hatay is leading again with the 27%, Kahramanmaraş 23%, and so on. When we look at the numbers uh, in Syria, uh, so these numbers are from the World Bank report, uh, we see that totally the number of totally destroyed buildings uh, is, uh, is 1,796 and partially destroyed buildings number uh, is above 8,000. So when we look at the casualties, the death toll in Turkey is above uh, 50,000 and unfortunately it's still increasing um, because still uh, there are um, debris and unfortunately under debris uh, it still reach uh, some, some dead bodies so that's why it's increasing and number of injuries is more than 100,000 and in Syria the death toll is approximately uh, more than um, 7,000 and number of injuries is more than 14,000. Uh, when we continue with, uh, with the economy, uh, in fact, I will give the floor to Ahmed soon. Uh, he he work on this uh, on this part, the economy part. But briefly, uh, uh, I will say that uh, here we see that the GDP of the affected region, the um, the representation share of the GDP of the affected region uh, is about about 9.3, and last year it reached to 11.4. Uh, and again, we see that uh, its shares in the agricultural production is high. And also, I should note that uh, especially this area provide fresh fruits and vegetables mostly. And we can see uh, this area is also active in the industry and uh, manufacturing. Uh, when we look at the uh, share in total exports, uh, we can easily note that uh, it reached to um, 8.73, but we should consider, uh, we should remember that the exports from this region is pretty much through the Middle Eastern countries. And uh, recently, uh, we reached to, to a report uh, indicating about the uh, probable uh, damage or uh, estimations, uh, economic uh, estimation, loss estimation about this earthquake. And in the total damage is estimated as a lowest part as a representation of 8.6% in GDP through 11.6% uh, to GDP in, uh, in, in worst case, let's say. So, uh, Ahmed, would you like to add some parts in the part of economy? Okay, yeah, uh, I can say a few words. Good afternoon, all. Uh, uh, so, like, the presentation I made in the very early days of the uh, Earthquake uh, was a short presentation about the impact, economic impacts of the uh, earthquake, uh, but it was a projection uh, from the Marmara earthquake in 1999. As real, as more real-time data made available, uh, we have some uh, more realistic uh, reports about the economic impacts. Uh, of the earthquakes. So uh, I'm not going to repeat what Seda uh, mentioned, but the effect uh, is expected to be between 10 to 11 percent of the GDP this year. It's quite a big number. So what are we talking about? It's around 110 to 120 billion uh, US dollars. 
and this corresponds to 11 to 12 percent of Turkish GDP. Uh, most of the damage, uh, economic damage, uh, is coming from the uh, building uh, demolishment, let's say. Okay, so they have to be reconstructed. Uh, the second biggest item is the uh, destruction of the infrastructure and the uh, office uh, buildings, you know, the public service buildings. Uh, there is also a damage incurred by the private sector, except housing, and it is estimated to be around 12 billion dollars. Okay. And this category includes manufacturing industry, energy, communications, tourism, healthcare, education sectors, and damage to small trade persons. The, that region, especially Hatay region, um, there is a concentration of iron and steel industry there. There are a lot of uh, thermal power plants also uh, operating there. Um, so it, they are going to, they are continue to affect negatively the Turkish economy. There are some reports that uh, I have read recently. Um, so there are some online shopping platforms like Amazon. And one of them, Hepsi Burda in Turkey, is very popular. And they reported that um, from the earthquake affected region, more than 35,000 retailers stop taking orders. So this is an uh, effect. Uh, so they either uh, moved or they either died. Uh, so they are not taking orders anymore. Uh, and also about the debt toll, I'm now maybe breaching the economic part. Uh, one of the telecommunication company reported that uh, around 300,000 uh, GSM numbers are ceased to be operational. Okay. So the official debt toll is around 50,000, but 300,000 cell phones are stopped to be operated. This is also the case uh, for the credit card usage. Around 30,000 credit cards uh, have not been used anymore. Um, it's a big impact it's going to affect the Turkish economy. Um, the government said, promised, of course, this, you know, the elections is coming, uh, promised to reconstruct the whole area in one year. And, but the experts said it is unrealistic and it is not possible to do so. We neither have the money to reconstruct all these demolished buildings, nor the equipment or the workforce in one year. So it's going to take some uh, more years to reconstruct the area. Um, so I think uh, that's all I can say for the moment. Uh, it is important to understand, I mean, regarding our project, um, as I said, the sector, there is a textile sector, a vibrant textile sector in Gaziantep, and Gaziantep was one of the hardest hit uh, province. Uh, Kahraman Maraj is also a leading uh, manufacturing and textile uh, city. 
Hatay is known for agriculture, iron and steel, uh, and electricity production. Those have some, you know, input output linkages, and maybe that is what I have in mind as promise to you to do the socio-economic impacts. Uh, we need to uh, prepare regional input output tables to be able to see the effect on the total economy. Unfortunately, our statistical institute, Turkstat, does not provide regional input output tables, but I am trying to do my best uh, to prepare them. There are ways uh, to do this, and I'm going to discuss with Maria uh, uh, that to make it uh, to prepare those regional uh, input output tables to have the uh, full impact, okay? So, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I, I want to uh, add something about this loss in GDP. I forgot to tell. Uh, we always talk about the impacts of 1999 earthquake, Kojeli earthquake. So, the loss in GDP uh, by the Kojeli earthquake was 4%. So yeah. here the impact is almost triple. And also, yeah. um, as far as I heard, uh, according to the uh, business continuity in the area, so uh, many people had to move to other cities. And uh, some of them, they were uh, working in commerce. They had their shops and so and, um after the earthquake, they uh, they turn back slowly and slowly. But due to big aftershocks, they uh, turn back again. They move again from the region, and it affects also in one side the business continuity of the region, and on the other side there are people who are living there, and they need some services and they cannot reach those services because of this business discontinuity of the area. So yeah. uh, here we can discuss many ways of uh, impact chains uh, in, the, in the near future, I think. And in the last part, uh, of course, here uh, I didn't mention about the organization, communication and so, because we don't have quite solid reports regarding to these items. Uh, for instance, in the first days uh, of the earthquakes, uh, in many milieu, it was discussed about the disorganization uh, because of the organization of AFAD and people ask why uh, military is not on the field and people complain about the security problems. And uh, of course, the uh, governmental bodies, they try to give, um, give news uh, about on the area, the actions that they had taken, but uh, pretty much they were not sufficient or satisfactory for the people uh, living uh, in, in the earthquake zone and also living in the other parts of the country. So that's why, that's why we see uh, the propagation of fake news in many instances. For instance, the the worst uh, one of the worst one was um, it was after the um, earthquake in Hatay in 20th of February. Uh, there were this uh, search and rescue activities, and suddenly a fake news uh, it it says that the dam was broken in Hatay. So suddenly people tried in panic to leave the city immediately. And it was a fake news. 
And uh, there was a big problem regarding to sheltering. Uh, it was quite hard to find out uh, tents and containers uh, for sheltering. And what was the worst again, uh, the, effect, the earthquake affected region this time affected or hit by flood on March 15. And uh, here we have uh, some pictures uh, on, the, on this event. So, uh, of course, we are going to discuss, to study more on this uh, issues, to, to reveal the impact chain and to discuss, uh, to better understand the systemic failures uh, after the earthquakes. So, thank you very much for your attention.